Welcome back to Barnsley Music. My name is Barney. I'm a classical composer and the founder and director of Barnsley Music. In today's episode, I'm going to show you an excerpt from The Plunge of Hell, which is from the fourth movement or terror movement from Hubbard's on the Way. Hope you enjoy. I put a little bit uh, after the plunge. And just so you know, we're going to have two parts to the video. So kind of before the plunge, and then part two will be like the plunge and onwards. So I'm going to make an assumption, and I sincerely hope my assumption is truly wrong. It's heinous of me to make an assumption. But I'm going to assume that you're probably bored when you heard the very opening. Because listen carefully to the opening. I think the average listener, especially in today's age where things are constantly changing, they would hear that and think, oh, well, nothing changed. It's the same thing. Forget about it. Uh, it's not the case. This is actual music for orchestra. So you have to imagine the instruments playing that. And the other thing you have to understand is that, in, especially in classical music, that when something repeats, what that means is that it's something important. Listen again. It's, it's leading to something that we don't know what it's leading to. But it's not, it's each, each chord is different every single time. Okay? And that's why I will need you to use your imagination, and I will do my best to help you. So this chord that we hear, it has two parts. Okay? So listen to the top. And listen to the bottom. So these two parts are working as one, which is why you probably only perceived one part. Good. <laughs> but again, this is going to be for orchestra. So it, if you want to analyze, you can perceive different parts. So listen to just the flutes. And this is the upper, getting towards the higher register of the flutes. So it's definitely going to be very noticeable, but there's going to be a calmness, but a forcefulness as well to the sound. They're going to blend in really nicely. Now listen to the oboes. Now on a piano, that may sound a little bit bright, but for the oboe, it will it will sound very healthy, healthy, but it'll be um, a little more neutral. Okay, a little more reserved, but definitely like optimistic. So we have this upper, so we have the oboes here. And we have the flutes here. So these are wind instruments, so they have to take a breath. And then expel air, so there's like momentum. Even though on a piano, it feels static, it's, there's real momentum. 
So hearing these, rep, these chords repeat, it's, it's, not, it's not repetition. It's not repetition, okay? And this is one of the disadvantages I think we have in classical music is that it's hard to show people because sometimes we have to use, like myself, a piano to express something that is not really for piano, okay? Do you hear that arrival? How it feels like an arrival. Okay, let me play it again. And, and you know, if you find yourself getting bored, you're not listening. There's no way you're listening. Because there's, there's nothing boring. This is like, it, there's actually a tension in it. Because the more you repeat something, it's like, well, when are you going to leave? And when we get there, don't you feel a sense of arrival? Like, ah, let's just listen to a second before and into the arrival. Now, something I didn't talk about is in this upper thing that we heard. We have the clarinets. And this is a duller region of the carnets. It's like right in the staff. It's like it's kind of medium going towards the lower register. So it's kind of nondescript. It's, it's not like the juicy register. It doesn't have all the colors that we usually associate with carnet. So there's something very reserved here. And then we get this. And you really have to soak it in because after having what we had before, which was an upper area, when we arrive at this, it gives a sense of completion. Well, it's not a final completion, but it makes us feel, in fact, that what we were previously hearing was in fact incomplete because of what happens after. But the ear doesn't perceive it as incomplete when it's in real time. It's only afterwards when we get to the arrival that we're like, oh. So in this lower part of the chord, we have trombones here. And I don't know if you can feel the um, kind of a tightness, maybe. They're closer together. And we have the French horns here. So this is the brass. So you see, you have to use your imagination. So we have the, 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 the winds up high. It's going to sound like kind of like birds, like pure. And then we're going to have this kind of shiny brass, but kind of reserved all together. Plus, I also have the trumpets doing this. Very pure. So listen to just the brass. This is just a mic a part of the whole.
Something that I cannot even try to replicate on piano is I gave to the brass an indication called mutes. So what that means is for a brass instrument, they have like um, a bell, you know, where the sound comes out of. And then we put like a stopper, something to kind of choke the sound. So the brass are going to feel quite mu muted. <laughs> They're going to be restrained. So, I mean, you can't, you can't, the piano will never do it justice. You, you have to hear it live. And so then what we have is what we call a crescendo. So the music starts to grow. And what you would not have been able to hear on piano, you'd have to hear it live, is they actually added instruments at the end. So let me just play this ending. That was the punch of hell. We're not quite there. But if you look at the score, you'll see I add a trombone. So at measure 144, it's just two trombones. But uh, at the end of measure 144, I add a third trombone. So the trombones were here, and they stay there. And I add the, th the, the first trombone. So this gives a subtle sense of volume that we don't know right away, notice right away. Also, the French horns, which were doing this. At that ending part where I do the crescendo, I have the horns go up a little bit. So these are super subtle, right? Let me play the piano reduction again. I can't get all the notes, but it's try to simulate. And then it gets the bunch of. So, are you able to appreciate what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. 